Welcome to our virtual open house, sponsored by the Katie Geneva Cannon Center for Womanist Leadership and the Admissions Office of Union Presbyterian Seminary. We're excited to show you how you can continue your theological education with us. Our hosts are Reverend Melanie C. Jones, Instructor of Ethics, Theology, and Culture, and Director of the Katie Geneva Cannon Center for Womanist Leadership. Reverend Aaron Burt, Director of Admissions for our Richmond campus, and Tinsley Jones, Director of Program Development for the Leadership Institute. life-led sermon is that the basic idea is born in our living, out of vivid memories of things said and done. Being a front runner in a lot of this work, people want to dismiss the truth that I speak as anecdotal. Okay, if I don't have a scientific database where I can prove that what I've experienced is true for so many people, then it's not true. So the epistemological See your forgetfulness is when people take truth that hurts, truth that goes to the core of the being, truth that goes to the marrow of the bone, and people want to say, if you can't prove it scientifically, factually, then it doesn't exist. So what I try to encourage people to do is that kind of truth that stings like a serpent's tooth, that kind of truth that makes your teeth itch, the kind of truth that caused some people to lose their minds up in here, up in here. So even when people call your truth a lie, tell it anyway, tell it anyway. to tonight's virtual open house, again, sponsored by the Katie Geneva Cannon Center for Womanist Leadership and the Office of Admissions at Union Presbyterian Seminary. We are so excited um, to have this conversation with you on tonight and want to orient you to not only the Cannon Center, but also to Union Presbyterian Seminary. We may bring in the slides. Drawing from the Black Southern colloquial expression, you act in womanish, the word womanish defined by Alice Walker in her 1983 classic, In Search of Our Mother's Gardens, Womanish Prose, is a dynamic term that describes a growing field of study and social movement that takes seriously the historical and contemporary experiences of Black women while advocating for the wholeness and well being of all humanity. Union Presbyterian Seminary endowed the Center for Womanist Leadership to inspire, equip, connect, and support Black women divinely motivated to serve as change makers in their community. This guiding statement reflects the visionary insight of our founder, the late Reverend Dr. Katie Geneva Cannon, who in 1974 became the first African-American woman to be ordained in United Presbyterian Church. Dr. Cannon served as the Annie Scales Rogers Professor of Christian Social Ethics from 2001 to 2018 here at Union. And in 2019, following her passing, Union Presbyterian Seminary trustees named the center in memory of Dr. Cannon as the Katie Geneva Cannon Center for Womanist Leadership. For those of you who are just joining tonight, again, my name is Reverend Melanie C. Jones. I'm the director of the center, and we are supported by a competent and capable staff 
in Dr. Paula Parker, who's our program associate, Letitia Folks, who is our event coordinator, and Aria Kirkland Harris, who is our womanist graduate fellow. The advisory council of the center advises and supports our staff and the work of the center. They are members who serve as public advocates for the center by making connections with our denominational, our institutional, and our community leaders and partners internationally, nationally, and locally. The Advisory Council uh, represents members who are leading womanist thinkers, practitioners, activists, and allies, as well as local pastors and leaders. The Katie Geneva Cannon Center for Womanist Leadership, our mission is to nurture the soul of Black women as they cultivate pathways to whole communities. Union Presbyterian Seminary recognizes the significance of centering Black women's scholarship and wisdom as viable sources and resources for theological education. The vision is to become the premier center and catalyst illuminating and embodying womanist theory and practice in the globe. Since our founding in 2018, KGCCWL, which we affectionately call, was named as an endowed center of Union Presbyterian Seminary, fully integrating its strategic plan through programming as well as curricular development. We are the premier center, highlighting the experiences of one of the largest growing populations in theological education, which is or which are Black women. We are a leading center across ATS theological schools and the first that is named after a trailblazing Black woman scholar and a center that centers womanist approaches. Our constituency gathers across nine geographical regions all throughout the U.S. as well as the Global South. And we have received several grants to endow our work from the Henry Luce Foundation, the Carpenter Program, the Lilly Foundation, as well as numerous media and press features, including the Presbyterian Mission Agency, the Presbyterian Outlook, the Christian Century, and most recently, Richmond's TV Channel 8. The six high priority initiatives of the center include Womanist Wellness, which is our healing and retreat programming. Womanist Witness, which is our community engagement for emerging leaders. Womanist Wisdom, which is our publishing, cataloging, and archiving component. Womanist Worship, which is our connectional programming with faith communities. Womanist Wares, our social entrepreneurship efforts. And Womanist Works, which integrates the arts. These six high priority initiatives represent the holistic interconnections that make womanist leadership possible. Tonight, I want to share with you a few initiatives, uh, uh, actually a few programs within these initiatives that I think might be helpful to orient you to our work. First, womanist witness. Again, it is programming designed to inspire, equip, and support emerging Black women leaders as well as strengthen local communities. We are grateful for the opportunity to partner with organizations like the RISE Mentoring Network of the Union Theological Seminary of New York in order to lead a cohort for uh, women who are interested in mentorship and learning with other Black clergy women. Every month, we also lead the Just Talk or Talk Just series, co-sponsored with the Center for Social Justice and Reconciliation uh, Center here at Union Presbyterian Seminary. And our efforts in this capacity is to develop monthly programming to inform not only emerging leaders, but also local churches 
and organizations. Under our Womanist Wisdom Initiative, which is the academic, pedagogical, publishing, and cataloging component of the center, we are happy to announce an ongoing digital archiving project with the Presbyterian Historical Society, as well as the Union Presbyterian Seminary Library that is collecting all of Dr. Cannon's papers, works, art, um, all of her media and videos. So there is one centralized location where you can access the fullness of Dr. Cannon's catalog. In addition, we are in the process now on the Richmond campus of organizing a Canon library in Watch Chapel. We are excited most recently of the publication of the 25th anniversary edition of Katie's Canon, which is now available for purchase at Fortress Press and at Amazon. It features three new articles written by Dr. Cannon that have been added to this volume as well as a newly pinned forward by Dean Emily Towns. In addition, or in line with our womanist wisdom, we seek to affirm, support, affirm and support the scholarship of seminarians and graduate students here at Union. Here we've announced the Katie Genevan Cannon Scholarship or the Katie Genevan Geneva Cannon Merit Award at Union, um, that we welcome incoming degree-seeking Richmond students in particular to apply for in order to receive uh, additional merit or additional monies in uh, line with toward your education in addition to full tuition. To be eligible for this award, you must be an income degree, incoming degree seeking student, a woman of African descent who is seeking enrollment in the MDiv, the MACE, the MAPT programs, the dual or even the THM programs. We're looking for folks who are demonstrating strong academic potential, who show genuine interest in womanist leadership, who are seeking matriculation for this round of selections on the Richmond campus, and whose applications are submitted on or before March 1st. The application process for this merit award is that first you would submit your Union Presbyterian application uh, in line for our degree programs, that you will accompany it with a short essay for the Cannon Center Scholarship. Those essays are retrieved and reviewed in March by our advisory council. And then we notify our scholarship recipients uh, between April and May, and it includes 100% full tuition plus a $10,000 stipend. Under our Womanist Worship Initiative, as I said earlier, Dr. Cannon was the first black woman ordained in the Presbyterian church. Black women in the United States make up the majority of Black religious traditions while often continuing to bear the burden of unequal access to religious leadership in a contemporary era. Womanist worship then is our connectional programming with churches and religious communities in order to nurture and affirm Black women's religious leadership. Under this initiative, we publish the liturgical resources for faith communities, and we sponsor uh, womanist worship services that our next one will be held on March 9th on the Richmond campus. And we are preparing for our Seven Sisters Good Friday service, which will air virtually on April 15th. Under our Womanist Wares Initiative, which is a social entrepreneurship effort aimed at helping Black women and marginalized communities to become self-sustainable, we have launched the Womanist Marketplace, which generates income from the center 
and celebrates the entrepreneurship of Black women. You may follow us uh, to purchase womanist products from t-shirts to conference gear, to pins and fabric and much more at thewomanistmarketplace.com. We are committed to nurturing and protecting the spiritual livelihood of Black women because we recognize it is one of the greatest leadership assets of the Black community. We believe that inspiring, ministering, and replenishing Black women makes way for new possibilities to blossom. We are excited uh, and look forward to partnering this year, this summer, with Princeton Theological Seminary for its Black Theology and Leadership Institute entitled Fire in My Bones, Womanist Leadership, Preaching, and Activism. We invite you to save the dates of July 10th through the 15th, 2022, as we engage on a one-week intensive for clergy and laity uh, there at Princeton, and as we focus in on the subject of womanist leadership. For more information, you might you should follow us at btli.ptsim.edu. One of our newest programs is the Womanist Leadership Institute, co-sponsored with the Leadership Institute at Union. I've invited tonight Tinsley Jones to share more with us about this continuing education effort. Thank you, Melanie, and greetings to all that are viewing live and just appreciate the opportunity to share with you this exciting program. We are working in collaboration with the Katie Geneva Cannon Center for Womanist Leadership. My name is Tinsley Jones. I serve as a Director of Development for the Leadership Institute of Union Presbyterian Seminary. The Leadership Institute administers the continuing education and non-programming aspect of the seminary. So working together with the Center for Womanist Leadership, we came together and decided to launch a new program this academic year. It's called the Womanist Leadership Institute, and it aims to promote womanist scholarship and leadership in a continuing education environment. So what does that really mean? It means it really widens the net of an accessibility for the interested learners. So whether folks are seminary trained or not, whether they're ordained clergy or not, whether they are interested in womanist scholarship on various levels and experiences, this is the place for you. The program is developed to um, send out certificates of completion for those that are desire that. So we've set up a program that we have four course, four core courses and electives into the program. Now, what's great about uh, this setup is that it's really open to anyone to take classes at any point. So the four core courses are womanist, um, womanist biblical interpretation, womanist theology, models of womanist leadership, and womanist literature and the theological imagination. And so as you can see, one of those cores have been offered this academic year, and we offered three other electives. We've got one more course coming up in the spring, womanist social ethics, and registration is still open for that course. Now, being our inaugural year, uh, we've had we've really been trying to get a lot of feedback from our participants. And one common thread is not only are they blown away by the instructors, their level of knowledge, their care for the students, their care for the content. They're also very um, just overjoyed in the content they're ex being exposed to. But I think the number one feedback we're getting is the learning communities that are being formed with these womenist um, supporters womanist activists, people that are very interested in learning more and taking it back to their community, their faith communities. So the range of the audience, um, it's been exceptional. There's a diverse range of, of folks that whether they are ordained or not, um, we have clergy, we've got lay leaders coming together to learn um, and being taught and engaging with these just awesome instructors. So. We hope you'll take a look at it. We're going to um, include the website to find more information, but we're also excited about launching into our second year. So we've had great response for this first year, and we're hoping to continue that momentum 
as we continue to build out the program. So upcoming in our 22-23 academic year, we've got four, four courses. So there's four courses offered every year in the summer term, in the fall term, in the winter term, in the spring term, one course per term. And we always will offer or aim to offer two of the core courses and two electives each year. So coming up, as you can see, is Models of Womanist Leadership, which is one of the core courses, Black Women's Health and Wellness, which is an elective, Womanist Biblical Interpretation, which is a core course, and Womanist Worship, which is an elective. So you might be saying, what if I'm not interested in receiving the certificate for the Womanist Leadership Institute? That's great. You can take any course at any time in any order and take as long as you need. If you are interested in receiving a certificate of completion for the Womanist Leadership Institute, the aim is to take those four core courses and two electives. The hope is that we've built the program so interested participants can finish that in two years. However, if they needed more time or wanted to wait to see what other electives came up, that would be fine as well. So again, um, thank you for your interest. Uh, we're excited about this program and it's been a great avenue for continuing education in partnership with the Katie Geneva Center for Women's Leadership. Thanks, Tinsley. We are joined tonight by Aaron Burt, who is our Director of Admissions on the Richmond campus. And I want to invite her to tell us a little bit about uh, how you can consider learning with us here at Union. Thank you for that. So, I am excited to be with you all tonight to talk more about the degree program side of our educational offerings. Um, I want to start by saying that if you are in the midst of discernment, we want to be in conversation with you. I'm going to share some details and some information that may help you along the way. But really what we find is one of the most impactful things we can do with prospective students is have conversations and help to talk to you about your specific interests and what options we might have for you at UPSM. So I want to start by inviting you into further conversation. Um, some things that you might want to know about us are that we have campuses in both Richmond and Charlotte. So contextualized learning is particularly important to us and we're great grateful to be able to have locations in both of these cities. We offer an array of different degree programs as well as certificate programs. So I'd like to start by talking about basic degree programs. So these are for somebody who maybe has completed their undergraduate degree and is now discerning their first call into ministry or is looking for their first theological degree. So our basic degrees are a Master in Divinity program, a Master of Arts in Christian Education program, and a Master of Arts in Public Theology program. All three of these degree programs can be combined in dual degree options. So you could take perhaps a Master of Arts in Christian Education and a Master of Arts in Public Theology program. I wanna get a little bit more in depth with each of these programs is as you're considering these options, you might be wondering, would I have to come to campus or are there hybrid and online options? Really that depends on the degree program. So I'll, I'll share a little bit more about each. Our Master in Divinity program is offered in person in Richmond and a hybrid option in Charlotte. The Master of Arts in Christian Education is offered in person in Richmond, hybrid in Charlotte, and online. The Master of Arts in Public Theology program is a primarily virtual program with occasional in-person components that happen in Richmond. Um, all of these things I would be happy to explain about more what it looks like to be a student on our campus and a bit more about the day in the life. So I'd be happy to talk one-on-one um, -on -one about that as well. So I mentioned that we also have some advanced degree offerings. These are our THM, our Master in Theology, for someone who's already completed a master's degree in theological education, and they're looking to do a deep dive. This is a year-long study where you're partnered with um, a faculty member along with a small cohort of other Master in Theology students. Some people use this as an opportunity to begin pursuing potential PhD work, 
or to really look and hone in on a particular area of interest for their own edification and continued growth. The last program that I'll talk about tonight is our Doctor of Ministry program. We have cohorts that alternate between the Charlotte and Richmond campus. For fall 22, the cohort will be based in Richmond. These are small, intentionally designed cohorts um, to be able to represent a variety of different denominations, uh, different vocations, along with people who bring cultural and background diversity from a variety of different places and perspectives. Um, the, the DEMON program is one that you would have needed to complete at least a prior master's level course in. Um, so I'd like to talk a little bit more about how you can fund your theological education. For our basic degree options, every applicant who applies by our scholarship deadlines is automatically considered for what we're now calling our UPSEM Promise Scholarships. So that means that if you apply by in February 15th is our um, Richmond deadline and May 30th is our Charlotte deadline. If you apply for your application um, for a basic degree program by either of those dates in those locations, you are automatically considered for a full tuition scholarship for full-time students where 100% of your tuition is covered. Or for a half-time student, you would receive two-thirds tuition coverage. Then all of our students are considered for merit-based scholarships beyond that. So earlier tonight, we mentioned the Katie Geneva Cannon Scholarship, which we are so excited to be able to offer. And what that would look like is that you would apply to become a student, and then you would additionally apply for the Katie Geneva Cannon Scholarship. That scholarship is only awarded to one person in, on a campus at a time, but that doesn't mean that you can't receive additional funding for us. You will still be considered for additional merit-based scholarships, regardless of whether or not you receive the prestigious Katie Geneva Cannon Scholarship. So please know that scholarships are widely available um, and that we look forward to helping you be able to come to, to um, Union Presbyterian Seminary. Um, the last piece of uh, information that I think it might be helpful to have is my contact information. Um, as I've said several times, I would love to be in touch with you and you can reach me uh, via email at admissions at upsem.edu. Um, I think that that can be coming across the screen at any moment now, but um, it's admissions at upsem.edu. And uh, I look forward to being in touch. Thank you, Erin. I see admissions at upsem.edu. I think it's time for us to open up for question and answer. I see there are a few folks who are joined us online, whether it's on YouTube or Facebook. We are here to answer your questions and to give any information that we can either about the center or about our admissions process. So if there are questions out there, go ahead and drop them in the chat so that we can begin this conversation uh, with Q&A. Erin, I'll just ask a few questions so that you might reiterate some things like deadlines. You said for the application deadline for folks who are on the Richmond and for uh, the deadline on the Charlotte campus, can you give those dates for us again? Sure. Um, the scholarship application for Richmond is going to be February 15th. Um, one of the things that I'd like you to keep in mind is that th we recognize that this conversation is happening on January 27th. And so that's very close to our application deadline. If that deadline is of a concern for you, we would still love for you to be in touch. We can, we can work through hurdles that you might have. Um, additionally, the Charlotte deadline is for May 30th. Um, those are our scholarship deadlines. So if you put in an application after those points, you are still 
still eligible for what we call need-based aid um, that can be up to 100% of tuition coverage, but we'd really love to see you apply for a full scholarship. Wonderful, that's helpful. I see Reverend Linda Davis here on YouTube said she thoroughly enjoyed the Katie Geneva Cannon Conference last year, and so did we. Uh, several people have been asking us, is there a spring conference in 2022? And there is not. Our spring conference is usually biannually. So we will have our next spring conference in 2023. And folks should look forward to join us in April of 2023 for a hybrid conference. We're looking forward to making our way to Charlotte, as well as being in a conversation and dialogue with people online. So if you're looking for a Canon, a Katie Geneva Cannon Center for Women's Leadership Spring Conference, you should look for us uh, to bring the conference back to you April of 2023. The next question I see here is from Sandra Scott on YouTube. She says, I know someone who may be interested in the DMAN program at UPSAM. What scholarships are available for folks who are interested in the DMAN? That's a great question. Um, so I'll talk a little bit about the demon, and then I imagine this question may apply for the THM too, since I didn't talk about that. Um, so demon, the the scholarships, um, are, demon scholarships are not available, but we do have what we call again need based aid for up to one third of tuition coverage. I will say that one of the things that I really like about our demon program is that it was intentionally designed designed to be affordable. Uh, the entire cost of the program is $10,000, and that cost is spread out over the course of three to four years that you are in this program. The first two years of the program are really paced at a cohort level, and you're moving through the program in um, pre-structured classes with a group of people. And then the last two years, or year two, two years, are structured um, where it's more at a self-pace and it's more focused on research. So whether you complete in the, the three-year timeline or the four-year timeline, the program cost will not be more than $10,000, and you are eligible for need-based aid up to one-third of tuition. For the THM, we do offer scholarships that can cover up to 100% of tuition. That's helpful. I see another question here on YouTube from Mercedes Buchanan, who asks, can you please repeat which programs are online or are all for in-person? <laughs> So I realize that we are offering so many different options. Um, we are trying to be more accessible to students and coming up with some new and creative things right now. Um, so I, I wish I had an infographic for you for this question. But um, the programs that do have fully online options or primarily online options are going to be the Master of Christian Education, the Master of Arts in Christian Education has a hybrid or fully online option. And the Master of Arts in Public Theology is primarily online with occasional in-person components. What that means is that you're coming to campus about once a semester to gather with folks in person for a few days. Um, there's also a travel seminar that's offered within the Public Theology program that could have you in person for um, two to three weeks with a group traveling. Um, so those those are the in-person components for our basic or the the online offerings for our basic degrees. Um, the the doctorate of ministry degree is also primarily online with periodic in-person components. Um, in Richmond, that means that doctorate of ministry students meet in person once a semester. In Charlotte, they meet more frequently throughout the semester, but for shorter periods of time. Most of the work is being done virtually. I would also add for folks who might be interested in the Womanist Leadership Institute, which is again our continuing education unit that Tinsley talked about earlier, that invites folks who are seeking seminary, folks who have already went to seminary and looking to refresh, 
folks who are adult learners or even folks who are active in ministry in some clergy or laity capacity. The Womanist Leadership Institute offers courses that are all virtual and all online. So if you're interested in joining us in that program, you can look to join us virtually all throughout the year. And there are about four courses a year in that structure. I see we have uh, Karen Larby who is joining us from Facebook. She said that she arrived a bit late. Uh, she is joining us all the way from London, UK. So welcome, Karen. And she wants to know if there are links to the programs that were mentioned. Uh, I also see that our folks have already dropped in uh, our chats uh, where you can find all of our degree programs at www.upsim.edu. Um, and you can look for any of our degree programs that you might be interested in. If you have any questions or want to know something specific to the center, you can always find us on Facebook at Center for Womanist Leadership, on Instagram at Just Womanist, at Twitter at Just Womanist. If you want to purchase some of our items at the Womanist Marketplace, or if you just want to go to our website, uh, you can always find us at www.centerforwomanistleadership.org. Um, additionally, our uh, information in terms of our email is cwl at upsim.edu. And Aaron said that the admissions email is admissions at upsim.edu as well. So thanks. For so, this also makes me think that we, we did not touch base about um, the certificate programs that are also offered in public theology and Christian education um, that viewers might want to know a little bit about as well. So if you're someone who um, is looking to be able to receive academic credit but is not ready to pursue a degree program, um, our certificate in public theology or our certificate in Christian education might be for you. Um, I am really excited about that public theology program that launched in fall 21. What we're looking at is the intersection between theology and what I consider to be um, different aspects of social justice. And that is one of the places that we really see womanism showing up in our curriculum. In our curriculum. Um, and so I don't know if you want to elaborate on that anymore, Reverend Jones, but that just is, is something that strikes out that viewers may want to know more about. Absolutely. In our MAPT program, it is one of the programs that is particularly oriented towards integrating our centers within the curriculum. And we've already begun to teach classes within this program. Last fall, I taught womanist or models of womanist leadership. This upcoming fall, Dr. Paula Parker will be teaching on womanist mysticism. Um, and later uh, in the year, uh, Dr. Lakeisha Lockhart will be teaching on womanist play. Uh, so we have a number of courses that are being offered and sponsored by the center that folks can uh, join that MAPT program or even the certificate program in order to get degree guaranteed credit or degree earning credit or, or academic credit uh, for those womanist courses as well. I see another question here from Nicole Thompson on Facebook. Do we reach out to Aaron if we are interested in the Charlotte campus or just the Richmond location? That's a great question, Nicole. Um, I'm grateful that I have a colleague that is on our uh, Charlotte campus. Her name is Lisa McLennan. She's not with us here tonight, but I'll be totally honest. If you reach out to either one of us, we will get you in the right direction. So um, using that admissions at UPSM email is one of the ways to contact us. Um, there's also some more contact information on our website. I don't want to bombard you with emails and numbers, um, but we we would love to hear from you. I'd be happy to start the conversation and then I can point you towards Lisa McLennan as well. Thanks, Aaron. Reverend Linda Davis here on YouTube asks, can you provide the DMIN application deadline date? Yes, that's a great question. So um, thank you for pointing that out, Reverend Linda Davis. Um, our DMIN application is March 15th. That's the deadline for the DMIN. 
That's helpful. And this particular cohort this year is on the Richmond campus. You're right. And so next year for fall 23, we will alternate to the Charlotte campus for the D-Men cohort. And for folks who are considering the D-Men, um, how long generally does the program take? So that's going to be a three to four year program. Um, one of the things that is the one of, one of the things that's at the heart of the program is you having a ministry context that you would be doing your research in. So there is an understanding that you are both um, doing ministry and in the program at the same time, and it is designed to accommodate that. Um, from what I've heard from people in the program, they're typically doing about 15 to 20 hours worth of study and academic work a week alongside their work in their ministry context. Um, and, and that would take you three to four years to graduate from the program. That's helpful. I see a question here from Rubina Fries um, on YouTube. She says, hi, I'm interested in basic degree MDiv full time in person. Will I be able to get to live in the campus residence? That's a great question too. So one of the differences between our Charlotte campus and our Richmond campus is that the Richmond campus has residential options where students are able to live in community together. We offer what I would consider to be somewhat of a dorm style housing. It's private bedrooms, but shared community kitchens all the way up to private apartment spaces for students who live on our campus. That's in the Richmond location. Charlotte does not have any on-campus housing for students. And we have a question here from Emily Newsom. She says, my undergraduate degree is from a non-accredited seminary. Would I be eligible for a master's program? So many helpful questions tonight. Um, Emily, we can certainly be in conversation. One of the options that we offer for students who haven't been um, to a non-accredited um, or who've gone to a non-accredited undergraduate um, education is that they are able to start with us in um, a a basis that allows them to show that they're prepared for this rigor of academic study and then move into being a full-time student. So there is a way for you to start a master's degree with us. Um, it's a little bit more unique of a pathway, but we can make that work. That's helpful. Well, I think we may have come to the end of our questions here. If folks have more questions, feel free to go ahead and post those in the chat. Uh, so that we can give some responses to them. Erin, are there any things that we should keep in mind? I think we've talked about some deadlines. I'm I just want to express general enthusiasm for the variety of programs that we're offering. Um, as someone who was a student at UPSM myself, I am so grateful for the way that womanism shapes our classroom environments um, and for that perspective and the centering of those voices. Um, and I think that there's a lot of exciting things happening at this seminary. Um, we have a wonderful community to be involved with where learning happens both in our classrooms and in the friendships and relationships that are built while you're here. So um, I really hope that you will consider, consider being a part of our community, whether that's as a degree seeking student or as someone who's going to be a part of the Womanist Leadership Institute there's just a lot of wonderful things happening here right now. I can agree. Not only do we have an amazing staff, fabulous professors, but we also have some really, really quality students. So come learn with us here at Union Presbyterian Seminary. Thank you everyone for joining tonight's conversation. Again, for more information about the Katie Geneva Cannon Center for Womanist Leadership, you may follow us at centerforwomanistleadership.org. You may also uh, join or follow us at thewomanistmarketplace.com. You may uh, connect with us, like us on Facebook at Center for Womanist Leadership. 
connect with us or follow us at Just Womanist on Twitter and Instagram. And then, of course, you might email us at cwl at upsim.edu. We'd love to continue this conversation online or offline if you contact uh, CWL or if you contact admissions at upsim.edu. Aaron or myself or our team will certainly respond to you and get back to you and try to help in whatever ways we can to ensure that you find a home and a safe space here at the Katie Geneva Cannon Center for Womanist Leadership. Thank you again. And to everyone, have a wonderful night. This year's Sprint Lecturer is the Reverend Dr. Will Gaffney. She is the Sam B. Husey Professor of Hebrew Bible at Bright Divinity School in Fort Worth, Texas. She is a womanist waiting in the word a goddess of interpretation, a priestess of precision, a translator of sacred texts. She is Miriam's daughter and Katie Cannon's dream. Some of you may remember her early works, Daughters of Miriam, or even her commentaries on the prophets. You may have heard of Womanist Midrash or her multi-volume series, The Women's Lectionary. For sure, the Reverend Dr. Will Gaffney is a name that everyone should know. Join us this May as she will be our speaker for this Sprunt Lecture.